So this is lesson 4.3, which is solving systems of equations by elimination. Our essential question is, why does the elimination method work when solving a system of equations? So our first example is, what is the solution of a system of equations? So just like with substitution, it worked best when we had a variable that was isolated. Elimination works best if your x's, your y's, your equal sign, and your numbers are all lined up. So you can see here our x's are lined up, our y's are lined up, our equal sign, and our constants. All of those are lined up. So this is a good problem to do elimination. So the way elimination works is we add the two equations together and we try to eliminate a variable when we do so. So if you look right now, let me highlight here. So if you look, we have a positive y and a negative y. So this equation is set up so if we add it together, we're going to cancel out the y's because one's positive and one's negative, and so they'll just cancel out to zero. So if we add these together, we get 3x, because 1x plus 2x, and then we get 7 plus 2 equals 9. These cancel, so we don't write any y's. Now we have a super simple equation. We have 3x equals 9. We can divide both sides by 3, and we get x equals 3. Now the nice part is with elimination is the second step is the exact same. So once we have one variable, we need to plug it back into one of our original equations. So I'm going to use x plus y equals 7. I'm going to take the 3, plug it in for x. So 3 plus y equals 7. We could probably solve this in our head. Um, but if we subtract 3 from both sides, we get y equals 4. So that means this solution to this system of equations would be 3 4. That would be my solution. Now sometimes, like the first example, we had y's that were already opposite value and they would cancel if we added them together, but that doesn't always work that way. So if we look at this second example, notice the x's, the y's, the equals, and the constants. They're all lined up just like on the last problem. However, if we look at this one, we don't have a variable that's just going to cancel out nicely. So what we need to do in that case is we need to find a number that we can multiply one or both of the equations by to cancel one of the variables. So if I look at this one, I see that we have an x and a 2x. So I know that if I multiply the top equation by 2, that will make them both 2x. But I want it to be opposite, not just the same value. So I'm going to multiply the top equation by negative 2. So I multiply every single term by negative 2. So that would give me negative 2x minus 6y, because negative 2 times 3y would be negative 6y, and then 7 times negative 2 is negative 14. Now I don't need to multiply the bottom equation by anything. I'm just going to rewrite it. So 2x plus 2y equals 6. Now I can add them together, and you'll notice that the x's, one's a positive 2x and one's a negative 2x, so they cancel. They're gone. So now I have a negative 6y and a positive 2y. That would add to negative 4y. And I have a negative 14 plus 6, so that would be negative 8. Now I'm going to divide both sides by negative 4, so we get y equals 2. So now I'm going to pick one equation to plug it back into. I'm going to use the top equation. So x plus 3 instead of y, I'm going to put the 2 equals 7. So this would be x plus 6 equals 7. We're going to subtract 6 from both sides, so we get x equals 1. So my solution to this system would be 1, 2. Okay, this is a word problem. So we have a florist is making regular bouquets and mini bouquets. The florist has 118 roses and 226 peonies to use in the bouquet. How many of each type of bouquet can the florist make? So you'll notice over here some super important information. So it says each regular bouquet has five roses and 11 peonies and each mini bouquet has three roses and five peonies. 
So I am going to make, let's say, roses is X and peonies are Y. No, oops, just joking. <laughs> let's start that again. So X is going to be my regular bouquets because we're trying to figure out how many bouquets, not how many of each flower. So X is going to be regular bouquets and our Y is going to be our mini bouquets. Okay, so if we start with the roses, so let's write a rose equation. So the rose equation would say we have five roses in the regular bouquet, so five times X, plus we need three roses in the mini bouquets, and we know that we have a total of 118 roses. Okay, and then the peonies, peonies, um, we have 11 in the regular bouquet, and we have five in the mini bouquet, in total, we have 226. Okay, so now this is an example, kind of like the last one. We don't have a variable that's going to cancel out nicely. So I'm going to pick the smaller of the two numbers. So I'm going to pick the 3y and the 5y. Now we know the at the very least, you can always just multiply them by each other. So 3 times 5 is 15. So we could turn both of these equations into 15. So if I multiply 3 by 5, so the top one gets multiplied by 5 and the bottom one by 3, one of them needs to be negative. So let's multiply the bottom by negative 3. Okay, I'm going to erase this so we have a little bit more room over here. Okay, so now the whole top equation gets multiplied by 5. So that would be 25x plus 15y equals 590. And then the bottom equation gets multiplied by negative 3. So that would be negative 33x minus 15y equals negative 678. Okay, cancel. I'm left with, if I add these together, I get negative 8x and I get negative 88. So then we can divide both sides by negative 8. So we get x equals 11. So that tells us that our X was our regular bouquets. So we know that there are 11 regular bouquets. And then we need to know how many mini bouquets. So we're going to plug it back into one of the equations. I'm going to pick the top one. So I'm going to say 5 times 11 plus 3Y equals 118. So that would be 55 plus 3Y equals 118. I'm going to subtract 55 from both sides. So that would be 63. And then I'm going to divide both sides by 3. So we get 21 mini bouquets. Okay, so that's another example of how we can apply elimination problems to real life situations. Okay, and our last example is, what is the solution to the system of equations? So we're practicing this again. So you'll notice on A, they aren't all lined up like we said we have to for elimination. So I'm going to rewrite A. So I'm going to subtract X from to both sides. So that way it cancels over here. And then I have negative X plus Y equals 13. So then down below we have 2X plus 7y equals 10. Okay, so I'm going to multiply the top equation by 2. And I, that gives me negative 2x plus 2y equals 26. And then we have 2x plus 7y equals 10. Okay. So then we cancel those out. So we have 9y equals 36. And then we're going to divide both sides by 9. So y equals 4. Oh, whoops. <laughs> okay, 
we're going to back up on this. So, okay. I thought, see, I, this is why it's important to read the question before you go through all the process of solving. So this says, what is the, so choose a method of solving. So now that we know both methods, it's saying we can choose whichever one we want. So that first one is not set up to do elimination. We could make it set up to do elimination like I just did, but it would be easier to just take this and plug it in for y. So that would be 2x plus 7 times x plus 13 equals 10. This would be 2x, we're going to distribute, plus 7x plus 13 times 7. is 91 equals 10. So this would be 9x plus 91 equals 10. Oops, got too many x's in there. Plus 91 equals 10. Subtract 91 from both sides. So that would be negative 81 divided by 9. So x equals negative 9. And then we already found from the previous way of doing it, we found that x would be, so negative 9 plus 13, so y would be 4. So our solution to this one would be negative 9, 4. So again, you can do any of these using either elimination or substitution, but that a would be better for substitution. Whereas b, notice how they're all lined up, it's already set to do elimination, and the y's, if I multiply the top equation by negative 2, it'll turn this into a positive 4 so that it'll cancel with the bottom. So this would become negative 16x plus 4y equals 16. And this would be 5x minus 4y equals 17. So those are going to cancel. So that would be negative 11x equals 33, divide by negative 11, so x equals negative 3. We could plug that back in, so I'm going to use the top one. So 8 times negative 3 minus 2y equals negative 8, so that would be negative 24 minus 2y equals negative 8 add 24 to both sides. So negative 8 plus 24 is 16. Divide by negative 2 on both sides and we get negative 8. Okay, so again helps if you read the problem. Don't listen to me here. So um, make sure, so on this one it's saying choose the method that's easiest. So if it's set up for substitution, do substitution. If it's set up for elimination, use elimination. So you want to use whichever is going to make your life easier. Okay? Let me know if you have any questions.